Hello, my name is Brian Bratt, and welcome to Interviewing People, where I talk to a variety of people about how they ended up where they are today, what they learned from their mistakes, and what advice they have for our futures. Today, Sydney Jamison of Young and Laramore, a marketing agency in Indianapolis, is with us to talk about her career journey in marketing. Enjoy the show. So, today we are going to be talking with Sydney Jamison, who is a 2013 graduate of Van Buren High School, and she is an account manager with Young and Laramore in Indianapolis, Indiana. So, she's going to be talking to us today about her experiences and what we might hopefully learn from her experience that we can apply to our own career endeavors. So, Sydney, thank you for being with us today. And we'll start by just having you talk a little bit about what your high school experience at Van Buren was like. Yeah, so like you said, I graduated in 2013, which is crazy to think about how long ago that was now. But um, yeah, I was I was super involved at Van Buren. I loved the small school feel of it. I was grew up in Finley, so definitely was a tight knit community there. Um, played soccer, played basketball, had a nice group of friends. I, I took a lot of AP courses to kind of get that boost before I went into college. But overall, just thinking career-wise, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I think I can't really pinpoint a moment where I decided before college. I think college really helped me get my bearings a little bit and really decide what I wanted to do. But I do remember, I forget what class it was for, but we did a uh, a job shadow with someone in the community uh, just to kind of explore what you might be wanting to do. And I remember I shadowed someone that my dad knew and she worked in advertising. And it wasn't the most glamorous job because I think the company was like a, they made piping for something. So it wasn't very glamorous, but she was kind of in the marketing advertising department. And so I shadowed her and, you know, I kind of thought this is interesting. And, and maybe if, you know, I worked with a product or a client that maybe was a little more glamorous, this is something I could do. So I do remember I asked her a lot of questions and I kind of, was trying to think, you know, outside the box in, in ways that her same job could apply to different areas. And so that's really where I first started to, you know, dive a little deeper into what a job in marketing, what a career in advertising looks like. So, um, yeah, I do, I do remember that from high school. And of course, all of, all of the classes that I liked, I definitely geared a lot more towards the English and the art sections rather than math and science for sure. So I think that kind of uh, led me on my way as well. So when you were in high school, uh, did you really explore any other options other than college or was college really always the path for you? And I guess, how did you make that decision? Where did you go? Are you happy with those decisions? So forth. Yeah, that's a good question. So college was pretty much always on the radar. I mean, my parents definitely encouraged it. It was something that my brother went on to do. So I knew I definitely wanted to go to college and I knew it was a good opportunity to really explore what I wanted to do more since I didn't really know. Um, so that was definitely always on the table. So when I started looking, I really looked primarily in state. I know that was a main, cost was a main factor for that. So I, I applied to a couple of different colleges, mainly within Ohio, and I landed on Kent State. So that's where I started. Um, and I went there my freshman year. And of course, that was, like I said, cost dependent. Also, it, it was far enough away where I felt like I was getting the college experience. And I really liked their business program, which is what I was going to go in to do and to do marketing. And they also had some really cool graphic design programs as well, which in the back of my mind, I started to think maybe that was something I could dip my toe into once I got there. So I chose Kent State and I went there my freshman year and freshman year is such a weird time because you're, you're not used to anything. You're living on your own. It's just it's it's crazy, especially coming from a small school like Van Buren. Kent State was huge. So I 
I went there and it was, it was kind of a shock to the system. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was definitely a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And I think that was something that the small school that I came from was definitely something I missed and it, it, it affected me. And, and I, I think just throughout my whole freshman year, I just kind of struggled with that. And I, and I realized that I think I do want, you know, more of that relationship with your teachers and to really have people by your side and knowing your situation and helping you find your way. And I didn't really get that as much. We had advisors at, at Kent State and nothing to knock the school by any means. It's a great school, but I think it wasn't, it wasn't the right fit for me. So about halfway through my freshman year, I started to look into moving back home. And I knew some people that had went to the University of Finley, and obviously I would be a commuter student since, since my family was there. So I could live at home, I could commute, and I could go to school there. So I started looking into programs, which were very reputable. They had a great business college, um, and obviously tuition was, was a lot higher, but with the funding that I could get with the loans, with the grants and all of those things, it pretty much evened out. And with the cost that I would be saving moving back home, I, I definitely weighed all those costs and it ended up equaling out. So when I really sat down to think about it, I said, what's more important to me, you know, my happiness or maybe saving a little bit of money, if like, if any. Right. So I kind of made that decision and I ultimately decided to transfer. So I transferred after uh, my freshman year. So I finished out my freshman year at Kent and then the remaining three years I went to UF. So it, it kind of lucked out too because I didn't have to do any additional years or anything like that. So um, I was able to finish in four years, which was great. Was that Was it easy to transfer? Um, was that, that's something that's really not come up in any of my other discussions with mm -hmm. people. Um, I don't know, was that simple? Was that just contacting the University of Finley admissions office and just they took care of everything or was that a lot of legwork on your end? Yeah, I, I think it was fairly easy from, from what I remember the process being. I do know when I first started thinking about it, I had reached out to their admissions contact or whoever, and I basically told them my situation. And I said, you know, like, what can I do? Um, and they they pretty much took it from there and they set up a tour for me. The, the next time I would be coming home, they're like, we can do a tour for you. And, you know, we can go through all the paperwork. So they made it pretty seamless. Um, and as far as all of my, you know, grants and things and the money that I was I was gifted to go to Kent State if any of those were transferable as far as that kind of stuff goes they were able to handle all of that so really it was it was pretty easy and then like I said my credit wise there wasn't really much more that I needed to take on top of my course load I think maybe that summer after my sophomore year I think I had to maybe take one or two summer classes but it it wasn't really anything. Um, so it ended up working out pretty well and they helped me with everything. So um, yeah, it was pretty seamless. Okay, good. So as far as a major, uh, what, what did you, did you keep your business major when you came to Finley? Um, is that something, or is, is, is that business major? Do you feel like that's worked out well for you? Would you direct people in a different direction? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I did keep on the marketing track when I transferred to Finley. So my major, all said and done, was marketing. And then I picked up a minor in graphic design. So Finley also had a graphic design program. And the way it worked out, I, I wanted to add that on. I didn't want to double major, but I did want to have that credit kind of in my experience because it, it was something that I was very interested in and I really enjoyed doing, but at the same time, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go like with marketing, the more analytical route, or if I wanted to go the more creative route in marketing, because you kind of, you kind of get both sides of it really in advertising, which is what I thought I wanted to do. Um, so I kind of wanted to keep my options open and I wanted to be able to have kind of both experiences and both skill sets, just in case, you know, I got 
you know, I got into my career and then I decided I wanted to make a change. So I thought that just looking back from obviously being in, in my career for three years now, it's really helped me, I would say, to have, you know, kind of both sides of the spectrum, because even though I'm not on the creative side, I'm on the account side, I can more effectively communicate with the creatives on our team. So I understand, you know, that design language, or I understand the programs that they're using, or how long it really truly does take to make a brochure, or right. something like that. So I think it has helped me in that regard, because I decided I didn't want to be one of the creatives at least having that background and knowing that has has really helped me as far as communication goes, which is a big part of my job. Right. Now, did you have any internships or anything while you were in college, or were you pretty much, when you went out into the workforce, that was your first real experience? Yeah, so I did. I had a lot of internships in college, actually, and that was the nice thing about going to Finley is they, you know, everybody, you know, your advisor, you know, your business professors, and they have connections. So I got a lot of my experiences and in my internships through professors or people that I knew. Um, and they have a great program set up to help you find internships as well. They had job fairs every, every semester, I think, and you could just go there and there were people in the community to help you find a job or interview for one. Um, so I had a lot. I had um, one with a nonprofit, which was super interesting to, to get that type of business experience. I had one with uh, Romark in Finley, which they have a great marketing department there. So that was more of a corporate setting. Um, and then I had a couple of other smaller ones within kind of within these connections that I made at Finley with the College of Business with some of my professors. It was kind of just like one off little jobs, kind of temporary things. So that all kind of added up together and really, really helped my experience and helped me figure out what I wanted to do. And I think I would encourage other students to you know, explore a variety of things. So especially in business, there's so many routes you can go down. And especially in marketing, there's so many routes you can go down, whether you work for a company that makes a certain product, or like me you work for an agency who might have, you know, five different clients. So I think getting those experiences beforehand and figuring out what kind of people you want to work with, if you want to work in a big marketing department, or if you want to work with one other person. I think all of those things are important. Um, and having a business degree, kind of knowing those things going in, you can kind of narrow your search a little bit and, and really enjoy your job a little bit more once you get to that point in your life. Um, yeah. Good. So thinking about, uh, it sounds like Young and Laramore, was that, is that your first job out of college? Mm hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was after I graduated from Finley, I graduated in the spring of 2017. I really I didn't know where I wanted to go. And so it, it was kind of funny how I ended up in Indy because I knew I wanted to work in an agency. I had a lot of experiences, not direct agency experiences, but in the realm of agency life. And I knew that's the type of work I wanted to do. So I'm not going to lie, I kind of pigeonholed myself because I only applied to agencies and I should have probably applied to more places, but I really wanted to work at one. So I applied to places in Cincinnati and in Columbus and knowing that agencies are more prominent in big cities, that's kind of where I, I put my focus. Um, but Indy wasn't even on my radar, to be honest with you. I hadn't ever been to Indy. And so I was searching in all these places and I would get these interviews, first and second interviews, and then nothing would come of it. And I was kind of at this point like, oh my gosh, like what do I do? And I was starting to think, I'm like, you know, do I just stay in Finley? Do I keep working at the internship that I'm at? Because that was going well and I enjoyed it, but at the same time, it wasn't really truly what I thought I wanted to do. So I kept searching, and one day, I don't even know what made me type in Indianapolis, but I was like, you know, Indianapolis isn't, isn't that far. It's about the same distance to Cincinnati, and it's a big city. 
seems cool. <laughs> so I, I did a Google search and I just searched advertising agencies in Indy and Young and Laramore, Wynell was the first one that came up. And so I clicked on their website and I was looking through kind of the campaigns that they've done. And then I went to their jobs page and they had an associate account manager position open which was entry level account management. So I was like, this is a sign maybe. <laughs> so I applied and I think it took a couple weeks, but I got a message back and they asked me for a phone screen. And so I talked with the hiring manager and that went really, really well. And so then I think it was like a couple days later, they asked if I wanted to come in for an interview. So for my interview here, it was my first time ever in Indy, <laughs> which was crazy. So I came here, interviewed, it went really well. And then from there, it was kind of, you know, a couple other weeks passed by and they were like, how early can you start? <laughs> so I'm like, wow, I guess I'm moving to Indy. I've never, you know, explored it much more than just a day's worth. So let's do this. And so I moved here. Um, it's a little over three years ago now and I'm officially settled in and yeah, I, I am now an account manager. So, um, I got promoted about a year, year and a half in. Um, so you, I started off as an associate and an account manager. And so how the system works, it's, it's kind of a tiered, a tiered system on the account side. And it just, it's a matter of who's under you and the size of the account. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. So what exactly do you do now as an account manager? Um, how do you apply your your college major in marketing? And um, yeah, just give us a little bit of background on that. Yeah. So like I said, I majored in marketing and I minored in graphic design. So really, I would say the degrees have helped me and it's, you know, important to to have that knowledge and that background. But I think really truly the stuff that made a difference in my job and the stuff that, you know, I really relied upon, you know, my first year working here were those internships and were those experiences that I had kind of out in the real world working with real people, you know, real coworkers, real clients, all of that kind of stuff. So um, just from a day to day standpoint, I am the point person on so right now I have three accounts and it and it varies depending on the size so another account manager might have one account or might have two so um, I have three and I am basically the the main contact between the client and our creative team and then vice versa so I'm kind of like the middleman is an easy way to think about it um, so I am in charge of talking with our client, figuring out their needs, what are their budgets, what, you know, what issues do they have, what feedback do they have on the stuff that we've been making for them. And then I turn around and I'm the one that communicates that to our creative team. So say the client, you know, we have a scope with them that is going to rebrand their whole website. So I package that up, you know, we talk about budget and, and terms as far as that goes. And then I relay that to the creative team and then work with them on making changes and go through all of that process. And then we eventually deliver the final product. And that's kind of just, I'm simplifying it because it's all sorts of different projects, but that's kind of the gist of it is right. basically, yeah, I'm the middleman, I would say is an easy way to put it. So the people that are on the creative team, uh, are most of those people graphic design majors, or are there a variety of majors that people might have in that position? Yeah, so I would say it depends on the size of the agency that that you're at. Mine is, we're fairly small. Oh, my cat just jumped up here. <laughs> um, we're fairly small, so um, we, we don't do a ton of production in-house but we do have graphic designers so definitely they would have majored in graphic design or design or art of some kind we have a couple photographers we have a couple videographers um and then once you get higher up it's more managerial at that point so for example an art director or a creative director they probably would have started out as a graphic designer of some kind kind of you know lower level doing the work 
And then once you get to a certain point, then you kind of oversee that work and you talk more high level, like creative direction. And, you know, what do we want this to look like from, you know, a higher up view? Okay. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you talked a little bit earlier about how, uh, you know, some of the connections you had with your professors, that those then led to internships and so forth. What role have you seen networking and building relationships playing beyond that now that you're in the career field and, and so forth? Have, have you seen that have an impact on you? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think my professors at Finley and the people that I was connected with there really put an emphasis on that. And I didn't really realize how big of a deal it was until I really started applying to internships and to jobs. Um, so like I said, when I was, when my internship was coming to an end and I was getting ready to graduate, I was in the full swing of applying to places. And I knew I didn't want to stay in Finley and I was applying to places in Columbus and Cincy. And I, I had really found that you know, getting some sort of foot in the door or some sort of connection helped tremendously, even to get an interview. So a lot of the places that I applied to in Cincinnati, for example, I would go down there a lot for the weekends because I knew people down there and I would go there frequently anyway. So I would see if I knew anybody through my connections at the university that lived there or that worked in a profession that I thought was interesting. I would start there. And then if it was kind of nothing or no really connections from, from my high school contacts or not high school, I'm sorry, college contacts, then I kind of did a blind LinkedIn search and I would look at agencies that I was interested in, maybe ones that had openings. And I would look through the people that worked there. I would find someone that looked pretty personable or even kind of a, either in a hiring role or maybe in a step above an entry level role that would be kind of a mentor to me. And so there were quite a few instances where I would just blindly slide into the LinkedIn messages and I would say, hey, I am a student at University of Finley. You know, I'm really interested in this company. I would say a couple like personal things about myself and then I would say, you know, I'm, I'm really just interested to talking to people in a position that I hope to get to one day can like, do you have 10 minutes, 15 minutes just to hop on the phone? Or in some cases, when I would be coming down to Cincinnati, I would say, I'm actually going to be in town for the next couple of days. Do you want to meet up for coffee? And that worked. I mean, sometimes people would be like, sorry, I'm super busy. But other times it, it really truly did work. And there was, there was one time I just shot in the dark and I said, Hey, I'm going to be in town. Do you have time to meet up for coffee? And she's like, sure. And that led to an interview. It was, it was really kind of cool because when you can have 10 minutes, 15 minutes or a coffee with somebody, they really get to know your personality. And that's so much more beneficial than just like a couple words in an email. And I think if you can like get to know somebody on a more personal level and even just talking to them about random stuff, like about their pets or their family or what they did that weekend, that really helps build a connection and they trust you more. And from there, then they go into talking about, hey, by the way, we have this opening and, you know, they pass along the information and then you apply from there. So I really found that that kind of stuff as awkward as it was, I hated doing it, but you know, after I did it, I felt really good because I was like, wow, like this was a stranger a week ago. And now, you know, this might be a really genuine connection and you know, my, my next coworker, you just never know. So, um, that kind of stuff helped me. Um, and it, and it also helps you build confidence because a lot of people don't like doing that. Like it's, it's uncomfortable and it's scary. But if you just look at it from, you never know what this could lead to, or, you know, what's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is they would just say no. And then you would be like, okay. And then you never talk to them again, probably. So it's, it's, if you look at it from that way, it helps and it kind of lessens the nerves a little bit and you just, you got to do it and it helps you prep for the interview anyway. So that's kind of how I looked at it. And 
it was it was really beneficial. Good, good. Yeah, I think you know, and again, I, I think back to you in high school, and and you know, you weren't always the most. Um, you were not going to be a really loud person, right? <laughs> I'm sure, that was difficult for you, but you saw the benefits of it, and so you took advantage of that. And yeah, like you said, confidence, uh, just believing mm -hmm. that hey, I, I can do this, and and that then the people that you're talking to, they see that confidence and that's the right. kind of person they want to hire and so forth. So that yeah. is perfect. One other big area that we've talked about in, in our class this year that we've been focusing on life after high school is thinking about uh, branding. What can we do mm -hmm. to set ourselves apart from other people? What can we do to uh, show people our interests, uh, who we are, et cetera? And obviously, I never talked about that with your class when you were here. But right. Is, is that anything you either can see had an impact on where you are today, or is that something that you think about today as you, you know, look, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road as far as, you know, how can I set myself up for success and so forth? Is, is that anything that has played a role either in the past or in the future for you? Yeah, that's definitely something I put a lot of thought to when I was in college, when I was applying to jobs and internships. I think I put more of more thought to it than probably your average business student because I did have that design background and I wanted to kind of showcase that work alongside of it. So one thing that I did, which I think is becoming more common now just kind of across the board as far as you know students applying to jobs is to create a personal website and I used Wix for mine I believe there's a lot of free platforms out there you can of course buy a URL to make it your own but um, there are some free sources available out there and so I made a website that kind of had the same look and feel as my resume and that's the place where, you know, I had a digital version of my resume. I had some of the graphic design projects that I had done up there, um, some photography that I had done because I dabbled in that a little bit. And so I just really used it as a space, as, as almost a visual extension of my resume because you can only fit so much on a piece of paper. Right. And so it was a good way to, you know, show my personality a little bit more, perhaps show some more design work. Um, if that was, you know, a job I was applying for that was relevant, that was there. So I think that's a really good way that students can, you know, extend that resume a little bit more and make themselves a little bit more dimensional than just, you know, a sheet of a sheet of paper or a cover letter. Um, and one thing I will say, as you were asking that, I started to think, um, so last year, last Actually, end of last year, beginning of this year, before COVID hit, we were looking to hire an intern at YNL, and I, for the first time, got put on the committee to do that. And that was super cool because I had never really participated in the interview process and all of that. So I was put on the committee to, you know, source interns, set up the application process for them, and actually phone screen them and narrow down the list to eventually pick an intern. So um, I kind of saw firsthand what students in college right now are kind of doing as far as personal branding goes. And I will say I was impressed by so many resumes that we were sent and personal websites that was so common. And so as we were looking through, we were, we were really looking based on the design of them and like how much time they put into it or if they had a website. And so a lot of that stuff did play a factor as someone who was the interviewer because it just is that attention to detail that, you know, sets it apart from someone else who just, you know, had a black and white Word doc and sent it on our way. And, you know, the ones that were colorful or the ones that, you know, showed their personality a little bit more really stood out from the crowd and when you're interviewing that's what you want to do right. and I remember one of them she had a little part on the side that had said talk to me about and then she had a couple little bullets and it was just like some of her top interests and it was cool because in an interview you can look at that and be like tell me more about like this 
um, you know, this interesting interest that you have or something. So it, it really added that personal touch. That was really cool to see. Good. Well, that's good to hear because we are going to be working on some of those things and uh, students are working on using social media to, to share their work mm -hmm. and so forth. So uh, it's good to hear from someone in your position that, yes, employers do pay attention to that. They do want to see that, so forth. So as we think about careers and so forth, we know there are going to be challenges. Obviously, COVID uh, was a huge right. one for every employee and employer in the world. Uh, is there anything other than COVID that, that you have maybe had to overcome um, to get to where you are today, or, or maybe you're in the middle of a challenge and you're working toward overcoming it right now, uh, to just, I guess, maybe reinforce or encourage students that, that yes, you are going to have problems, but mm -hmm. you will find a way over them and, and so forth. Yeah, that's a good question. I think really, in so in my position, I've been at YNL for three years now, I think I don't even know the, the time that it took, but I think probably about a year and a half in, I really felt like, you know, I was at a point where I was mastering the clients that I was on. I was good at my job. I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm doing a good job and I'm doing what I need to do, but how do I, how do I get to that next level? And it was, it was before I had gotten promoted to an account manager and I was kind of going through these things in my head like I feel like I'm kind of just you know going through the motions almost like I feel like I have this down but like what do I need to do to really you know get to that next level it's something that you don't really think about when you are you know like as your first career right out of college it's it's not really something that you've had to experience before because if anything, you've been at an internship for maybe a summer or maybe two summers if you're lucky. So it's not really, there isn't really that opportunity for growth because you're just an intern. So I think that was something that I really struggled with because I was, I was like, wow, like what do, what do I need to do? And I think something that made me step out of my comfort zone a little bit is having conversations with people that were above me. So whether it be, you know, my manager or the senior account manager, the senior account manager right above me or someone even higher up on the accounts team, having conversations and sitting down with them and saying, this is how I think I'm doing. What can I be doing more or what is that next step for me? I think I I never really had to have those conversations before and so it it was kind of scary and it was kind of uncomfortable but if you really do want to get better and you want to get to that next level you have to talk about those things and one of the things that I found after having those discussions was that you know I need to be a little bit more confident in myself I think when I got to that point a year a year and a half in where I was kind of just doing all of this stuff I was really good at the detailed stuff really good at the billing really good at the timelines but there wasn't really any confidence when it came to, you know, briefing our creative team. Like if I needed to stand up and give a presentation and do something like that, that's the kind of stuff that I shied away from, or I didn't voluntarily do that stuff. And so after, you know, talking to my manager, they had noticed those things too. And so we thought about it together and basically set some goals for me within the next couple months to kind of work towards. And some of those things were, you know, just putting yourself out of your comfort zone sometimes and maybe voluntarily, you know, giving an update during a meeting or, you know, asking questions that you maybe wouldn't normally ask or I would be too scared to ask. And so there were really some actionable items that I could take to really work on my confidence a little bit. And I think after I started doing those things, that's when I saw growth happen and that's when my manager saw growth happen. And then um, we ended up promoting me to an account manager. And I feel like at that point I had earned it. And then from there forward, I was like, okay, well, that's kind of how you get to the next level. You really have to do some self-evaluation and then also talk to your peers and talk to your managers and work together. It's not just like this scary unknown. You have to you have to talk about it and you have to kind of figure it out. Right. 
Well, that's awesome that you, you know, you talk about comfort zone. We've talked about that a lot. You talk mm -hmm. about using feedback. Uh, you know, we've talked about how important that is. So, uh, perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that you were able to overcome yeah. that challenge. And, and uh, yeah, the way, like you said, it, it's worthwhile when you look back now and realize, hey, I did these things and it got me to where I need to be. And, and so that, mm -hmm. that's very awesome. So the very last question I want to ask you is, uh, what is it that you know now that you wish someone had told you when you were back in high school to get you ready for life after high school? Hmm. That's a good question. I would probably say don't put any limiting beliefs on yourself. I, as far as what you're going to be doing, you know, five, ten years down the road, or where you're going to be living or anything of that matter because looking back and thinking back to where I was in high school I never would have thought I would be living in Indianapolis I never thought I would be working at an agency it's just really funny to you know think how far you can co you can go in such a short amount of time so I would say really open yourself up if you if Finley is all you know Van Buren is all you know think, think a little bit broader and maybe dream a little bit and, and think about, you know, what places, what places could I go? Or are there places that I've always wanted to go or things I've always wanted to try? There's nothing that's really stopping you. And I think you can, you can gain experiences that might help you in that direction. They may not be specific experiences related to it, but you never know what a conversation might bring and you never know what a connection might bring and with those experiences that you've got even if they are just in the environment or in Finley they can really have a meaningful impact and and really help you if maybe you eventually want to have this big glamorous job in New York City it's totally possible so I think just not thinking in this small bubble that you might have and I was totally guilty of that you know in 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 college when I was in Finley you know I, I just knew my Finley bubble and I think once I expanded that, I really saw the opportunities that were out there. And, you know, I, here I am now, and I never would have, you know, thought I would have ended up here. So um, <laughs> here he is again. <laughs> so I think just really not limiting yourselves and, and being open to new opportunities. Right. That is awesome. So Sydney, it's <laughs> so great to catch up with you and hear what you're experiencing in Indianapolis and, uh, all of your experiences I think are going to be really, really useful to my students and hopefully anyone else awesome. who might watch this who um, is just trying to gain more career uh, advice, information, etc. So I greatly appreciate it and uh, I hope that everything continues to go well. I hope that you get to go back to your employment or your office uh, <laughs> yeah. in the near future, although I do love the, uh, the brick wall back there behind you. That That's very cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so, uh, but thank you again very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It was fun. Thank you to Cindy Jamison for talking with me today. And if you'd like to learn more about the topics we discussed, please explore these websites. I look forward to you joining us for our next episode of Interviewing People, which will be released in the first week of January 2021, and will feature Emily Lammers, a 2013 graduate who is currently a legislative assistant in the U.S. House of Representatives.